Hi, I'm Jerry James Stone, and today I am here talking with musician Michelle Branch. Hi, how are you? Great. I'm surprised you didn't use my um, my Twitter bio. You know, musician. I, 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 we are going to go into that. Actually, I love your Twitter bio because you know not only do you have musician, you have chicken farmer, backyard chicken farmer, um, it, food and wine, which you know I love. Wrecker was the one I was going to ask you about. I didn't actually okay. quite get that one, so maybe you can explain what that is. Um, but yeah, you have a really really interesting Twitter bio, so maybe you can explain Thank that a little you. bit. Thank you. Yeah, um, I feel like my Twitter bio kind of sums up. It's the best bio I've ever had. You know, you hire people to write these long bios, and I'm like, my Twitter bio, short, sweet, to the point. Um, singer, songwriter, mother, backyard chicken farmer, lover of good food, wine. What else am I missing? Oh, F word. Oh, F word. But lover of the F word. F word, yeah. That was another part that I although really I, enjoyed. Although I have to watch it because I have a six year old daughter. Um, uh, Wrecker was, I was in a country band called The Wreckers for okay. a while. So that was my nod to my my time in Nashville doing that. Um, I'm trying to remember, oh, and lover of palindromes. Palindromes. Yeah. Now, do you tweet out palindromes? Once in a while, but there aren't as many. Like, I, I first started to do it and then kind of <laughs> got depleted really quickly. <laughs> but my favorite um, is a man, a plan, a canal, Panama. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, there okay, you go. palindromes. Yeah. So, let's, I guess we'll just work our way through your Twitter bio. Okay. Um, we'll start with. Um, Let's start with chickens, okay? Because um, we've had some chickens here today, and what got you involved with having? I mean, that's sort of an odd thing to have in your backyard, yes. you know, especially here in Los Angeles. Yes. Um, being living in Los Angeles and being a backyard chicken farmer is um, probably the thing that I get asked about the most. Um, I, it really started with me being such a weirdo about where I get eggs from, and you know, started buying them at the at the market, organic, this, that, free range, then started kind of sourcing out better ones at the farmer's market, then started talking to friends who also had backyard flocks, and just one day was like, to my husband, presented it, like, listen, can we have chickens? I've already looked it up, I've checked our local ordinances, ordinances, and we're all good, and he was just like, are you kidding me? Like, just horrified by the thought, and I was like, no, it's really easy, I swear. And um, we adopted a flock that needed a home. Um, they were living in Long Beach, and they were already at laying age at the time. And um, so just brought them to our home, and it was like, it's the best thing we've ever done, and we love them so much. And um, not, you know, at first I expected just to gain the most delicious eggs from them, but they're actually, like, we've really bonded with them. They become part of your family, and they're really fun pets to have. Huh. So. We have four, correct? Yep. Okay. Now. What do you, so you said you talked about you know getting organically fed chickens. So what do you feed your chickens? So I feed my chickens. We're really fortunate that we have kind of a big grassy yard, and they are free range, and they eat a ton of bugs. Um, we laugh because my daughter Owen, who's six, will go to the market and buy like organic berries and grapes, and then I'll go to use it, and I'll be like, "Where is it?" And she'll she'll she will have dumped the whole thing out in the yard for the chickens, so they're spoiled. Yeah. So they eat but as well as you do. They eat really well. <laughs> um, they pick through our compost pile, which they love. Um, they get some really good bugs and stuff going. Um, but we also have just like a regular organic like pellets that we give them that has huh. all the nutrients they need to lay. We give them oyster shells, which um, help build their calcium okay. for thick shells. Um, and yeah, you supplement certain things during the year when it gets hot and you kind of have to have to watch them um, in the heat. Yeah, the, but they need lots of shade. Yeah, they need lots of shade. Unless you get, you can get breeds that do better in the heat. Okay. Um, but yeah, they they don't like to be like out in uh, over 100 degree heat for too long. So. I can relate to the chickens. Yeah, as can I. <laughs> <laughs> so after you you go and you buy your chickens, I mean, what do you have to do to get set up? Is it just you know buy chickens, put them out in the backyard, and have your daughter give them some blueberries on their side? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, they really need a coop um, to protect them from wildlife because I didn't think that living in LA that we had any kind of predators that would get them. I thought, well, our neighbor's dog, maybe if he got in our backyard. But we actually discovered we have raccoons and they kind of found the chickens right off. Um, and they lived in our storm drain, who knew? So even when you live in the city, there are kind of critters around. Um, and it's a good reminder when you accidentally lose one. Um, but a coop, is a good place for them to have nesting boxes um, where they'll lay. They each, like my coop has three nesting boxes and they kind of all pick one and, and 
take turns laying, which is really sweet. And they have, um, they roost, like okay. every other bird. They, uh, if you don't have a coop with a place for them to roost, they might fly up into a bush or a tree, and it's a really big pain in the butt to put them down. <laughs> um, but yeah, they roost, they go in there. What's funny is, um, I didn't realize that they go in on their own at night to roost, and when we first got our chickens, I was chasing them around the yard <laughs> trying to pick them up to put them in their coop every night. But when it starts to get, um, when it starts to get twilight, they just kind of march in a single file line back into their coop. They they eat a little bit, they get some water, and they jump up on the perch and they roost. And uh, it's because they have really poor eyesight. And you can actually, um, the best time to kind of sneak up on a chicken or pick up a chicken is when it's pitch black. And um, one of my... That's the raccoons. <laughs> yes. And one of my... So they, they know, they know instinctually that it's getting dark and I'm not going to be able to see soon. I better get into my house. Um, but one of my favorite kind of facts about chickens that I didn't realize was you can actually trick a mother chicken into thinking she's had babies when it's dark. Um, if she's broody and laying on a bunch of eggs and kind of won't leave the nest, at night you can slip baby chicks underneath her and she'll wake up when it's bright and go, oh my gosh, there's baby chicks. And she'll adopt them as her own. So I think that's really sweet. <laughs> They're extremely maternal, I guess. Yes, they can be. How do... Um so with four chickens, how many eggs do you get? Because that sounds like you'd probably get quite a few eggs. Yes, we get a ton of eggs. They, they, pretty, they pretty much lay one egg a day on average. Um, when it's the height of the summer and it's really hot, it kind of slows down a bit. Um, and sometimes in the winter when they're not getting as much sunlight throughout the day, it slows down. But yeah, I would say on average with four chickens, we at least get three a day. So do you, and they I, add up really quickly. Well, I imagine you're giving eggs out to your friends and you know neighbors. Yeah, the <laughs> quickest way to make sure your neighbors have no problem with you having chickens is by bringing them fresh eggs. Because even when I buy, um, even if I bought organic eggs from Whole Foods that I tried to find out, you know, from a local farmer, this that, when you crack open one of their eggs and one of your eggs from your backyard, the color difference is just night and day. These The eggs that we have are just these beautiful bright orange. Um, they have so much flavor and um, and pretty much all my neighbors now like just knock on the door like, hey, you have any eggs? Or, or, yeah, everyone begs me for eggs. <laughs> we should have made you bring some today. I know. <laughs> um, outside of chickens, what else do you have in your backyard? I have, I have um, a pretty good little backyard garden going. Um, and it's a really good system because I have the chickens that I kind of let go through it once in a while and pick all the bugs out. We have a compost um, and, and we're pretty low waste because of it. Um, a lot of the food that we don't finish, the chickens can actually eat. Um, so instead of scraping our plates off into the trash, if like my daughter doesn't eat her whole dinner, we usually scrape it out in the yard and the chickens eat it. Whatever doesn't get eaten, we usually put in the compost and the chicken the chicken poop really is amazing for the compost. So, um, the chicken poop for the compost? Yeah. So you just let them, you just throw the poop on the compost yep. and it, it helps it break down more or is it? It's this like amazing, miraculous, um, <laughs> like people actually not only have begged me for, for eggs, but have been like, so what are you doing with your chicken manure? Really? Like really? <laughs> At first I was like, I'm just washing it away with the hose. What do you mean? And a friend pointed out that it's really, really great at helping kind of break down your compost. Huh. I, I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know that chicken food was coveted. Yeah. Hmm. Who knew? <laughs> um, but yeah, we have a garden. Um, we have a couple fruit trees. Um, living in California, one of my favorite things is we get citrus. Yes. And our neighbors have this giant avocado tree. We have some over-the-fence trading of eggs <laughs> for avocados, which works out nicely. Um, we've, we've been growing some grapes, although this is the first year we're actually kind of getting some fruit, and I don't know what we're gonna do with it. <laughs> I'm like, I, this isn't enough for wine, but it looks really pretty. Um, the chickens love the chickens love the grapes, though. Um, well, there's a lot of sustainable wineries that actually will use chickens to sort of keep the bugs at bay, too, yeah, you know? Yeah. Which is like the funniest thing. That, um, I've seen like a solar chicken coop where they just put it out, sun comes up, the coop opens, opens. up, the chicks run out, they like jump up and try to eat, you know, the bugs. They try to get yeah. the grapes, but they can't, yeah. you know, and then like dark, they just march back in and they're done. And yeah. that, to me, it's like the most innovative thing ever. It's <laughs> weird. Nature planned it perfectly. Yeah. How could we ever beat that? Yeah. 